Jesus. I've heard people say, bless God, I'd love to have an old-time revival. If you want an old-time revival, it needs to start in you. God told me to tell the church, death ain't no big thing. Amazing grace, how sweet the America is God's country, and that God, predominantly, is the Christian God. But outside of politics and social bickering, who really understands what American Christianity is all about in this day and age? And I went to Sunday school and considered myself relatively bright, and I couldn't tell you the first thing about what the Trinity means, why you drink wine at church occasionally, or who's taking the collection money. It's all a mystery. Maybe that's the point? Regardless, to try to better understand Christianity in America, we've come to the most quintessentially Christian part of America, the Ozarks to observe one of the most quintessentially American forms of Christian worship, the Pentecostal tent revival. Not the snake handling kind, those are kind of creepy. The tent's in that trailer. Okay. I'm just gonna back in behind the tree, and the tent will go in here. Okay. My father, when I was a little boy, he had a, he had a 40 by 60 tent. I can remember tents as big as this entire piece of property almost. You know, we could have 22,000 people. You know, can you imagine that? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, man. A lot of folks sweating, wasn't they? Join us now in worship under one of the greatest gospel tents in the world as we sing, preach, pray for salvation, and ask God's deliverance for the sick, the crippled, and the oppressed. During the Pentecostal heyday in the 40s and 50s, revival preachers like A.A. Allen and Oral Roberts were crowding tens of thousands of believers under massive circus-style tents. Harvey Perdue started his preaching career during this glut at the age of 12. And while the popularity of the tent revival has abated a little in recent years, his fervor is not. Oh, I was in style, man, the white shoes, the white belt. I got a bow tie, man, you notice that? Looking sharp. <laughs> His main church these days is an old film theater in Hot Springs, but summertime is tent pitching season for campers and Christians alike. I think people are wanting to come back to basics. The church is not some $22 million, $23 million facility. The church is where Jesus is. Here's the big boy. Can just yank that straight up. Oh, it ain't gonna work, is it? There you go, Thomas. Are y'all hot yet? Okay. Straight next set. Right there. Oh, oh, did I? Oh, man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Man, I'm so sorry. No, 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 it's all right. Aside from his daughter, Ginny Jo Purdue, Harvey's congregation skews a little to the older side. Of the 20-some regulars who came out to his tent-pitching potluck, the only ones who were able-bodied enough to actually pitch in were Sister Becky, Jeez. a John Henry-esque grandmother who probably drives steaks in her free time, and Brother Ron, uh -oh. an irrationally sweet Vietnam vet, like the Pentecostal version of John Goodman's character in The Big Lebowski. Brother Ron also brought a bunch of tools to help with the steak driving, including Sonny, a young man he picked up at the hardware store looking for work. You ever help put up a tent? Yes, sir. Hey, well, praise the Lord. Yeah. That's a good story. <sighs> Heat index, I think, today is supposed to be 105, which is basically a fatal fever in the human body. Harvey, before we came down, uh, had a heart attack, had a fatal heart attack. He was dead for 30 seconds, but doctors brought him back to life, which means um, you know, he's got certain bona fides as a preacher because he's been through the veil. He's seen the other side. But, also means he probably shouldn't be doing work like this in weather like this at all. Whew. Get down, can't get up. No joke. Whew. Getting up's the hardest part. We'll have to put those flaps over. Let me get a little shade right now. Yeah, yeah. Shoot. I'm also having to correct for all my swears, which is, that's a mental step. Whenever anything bad happens. Oh, hot. Gosh, darn it. What, what do you do instead of swearing? Just trying to stick to like light swears, like dang, you cracker, factory, what? and darn, <laughs> corn cob, piper. Even Christians, I don't care how 
righteous you may be, we're all human. Are we beyond sin? No. Do we sin? Yes. When you think about the word sin, what is sin? What is evil? Thomas, are you going to sin tomorrow? Probably, uh, to be honest. Are you going to sin next week? Very good chance. Did you sin last week? A lot. All of our sins was nailed to that cross. God the Father cannot look upon sin, Tom. If he did, he would destroy us like that. But God looks through the eyes of Jesus. His blood flowed from his side. And when we come to him, it washes away those sins. 80% of his heart's not working. Is not working? That's the reason he's wearing that packet on the front. Pastor Hopper, really? That's my buddy. All right, come on. There we go. That's what we want. Wait till you see the unity of the people. Hey, brother, can you help us? And they're such good people. This is the worst reenactment of you with Jim I've ever been in. We're just trying to get to heaven, you know, and that's all I care about. And you know what, bud? I plan on you going to heaven with me, even though the bus ain't gonna leave today. There's a bus? Let's drum up attendance for the night's revival. Me and Harvey's live-at-home daughter, Jenny Jo Purdue, headed into town to do some light flyering. Hey, guys. Hey. What are y'all doing today? Well, tell me about this revival. Oh, well, it is my dad's tent revival. It starts tonight. It's going to be at my house. Hey, Aaron, how are you? I'm good. You remember me, right? Uh, Jenny? You know, when revival started, they had sort of less competition as far as amusements in town. But nowadays, you know, Hot Springs is basically a tourist town, so you can go hang out on the lake. You can go get drunk, you can go play laser tag, go-karts, they got the baths here. Even the theater Harvey holds his regular Sunday services in forces him to compete against a year-long horror festival and a Bill Clinton impersonator who does magic. We couldn't interest you in coming to this uh, tent revival, could we? I want to be performing, though. Oh. You should try to make it one night. I wish I could. I work every night. Well, I'm going to be out at Hogs tonight and then out at Bubba's tomorrow night. And where are you? Oh, no, unfortunately, the location's not on there. Oh. Might be hard to, <laughs> Might be hard to, to get, find the word, get the word out. Right. Um, put it down on your side. Sure. That went well. Yeah, I think so. Right. The thing you got to remember, Thomas, is younger generations don't really know about tent revivals. It's no, more it's... more my dad's generation. It's kind of dying out, isn't it? It is. It's sad. It's kind of a dying breed. Jesus, could you please say? Dallas, St. Louis, and Detroit. Let your Before retreating to the woods of Arkansas, Harvey spent a decade recording music in the closest thing the region has to a belly of the beast, Nashville. All together, I've got about 23 awards in music. But I was one of the first to ever record country gospel. I played like fire yeah. on southern gospel stations. It was unreal. You know, they didn't know what to do with me. Uh, the Grand Ole Opry loved me. Is that you and Margaret Thatcher? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, me and Bill Clinton, me and Margaret Thatcher. Slick Willie and the Iron Lady. So country's really good with gospel. How are, like, Pentecostal Christians with, like, country music? Do you get, you run into flack for playing both? Used to. Hey, man, if you played country music, you'd go into hell. You're a Pentecostal preacher. Why are you singing country music? Because when our people leave our church on Sunday, they don't listen to the gospel music station, they're listening to country music. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about it is getting the gospel out. That's what it's about. After Jenny Jo was born, Harvey left the flesh pots of central Tennessee and recommitted his family to clean country living. You know, you, you talk about Pentecostalism and the Holy Ghost. I've had some experiences with the Holy Ghost myself. It was about a year ago. Um, I was grieving the loss of my mom. And my dad said, well, let's pray. Before I knew it, I was speaking in tongues. My arms were waving, my legs were going up and down, and that I did this for 45 minutes. Do you feel anything when it's coming on? Like, or does it just suddenly um, you're in the throes? You feel 
like a warmth, like this uplifting peace, this immense peace, like there's not another thing in this world but you and God. Just the way you describe it, it sounds like the greatest drug rush ever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Let me let you finish with your makeup. Oh, no, you're You've cool. You've been holding that, uh, um, I don't know what things are. This is called lip liner. It makes my lips look oh, fuller. Oh, okay. You washed your hair earlier? Yes. Sir. We're gonna put a little aloe vera on it. Mm. Aloe. Like this, put it on both your hands. I always rub my face down with this, because this is great for your skin. Right, now, you see what I'm doing right here? Okay, I'm gonna you down a little, and then go. Yeah, I'm just a little. I got a little ball spot in the back, so we have to conceal it. Oh, you do a good job of that. I didn't notice until now. <laughs> it seems to me if you're preaching in the tent, it would that you'd kind of be dressed down or something, but it's not the case at all. Most of the time, I like to dress up. When you look at businessmen, most of them look the part, don't they? Of course. Because it's a sign of success. Just because you're a preacher doesn't mean that you shouldn't look nice because who I work for is the Lord Jesus Christ. Or when it comes to working for the Lord, shouldn't we look our best? Mike said, one, two. One, two, 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 one. So the band's tuning up right now. Got a few more minutes. Cross guys, Skip, uh, who practices cross across the country and also runs a, um, Karate school and body shop. Uh, I think he's playing drums tonight, actually. Hey, Skip, sure. you playing drums tonight? Uh, I'm gonna play at it. Okay, band sounds good. Looking forward to this, especially the uh, Holy Spirit component, which the way Jenny Joe describes it seems like very strong in DMA. One, two, three. Jesus! Well, what do you know? It's gonna be you and Satan, and you're gonna face off with him, and you're gonna say in the name of Jesus, bow. And I'm gonna tell you, he's gonna drop just like a gun shot it. Stop trying to figure it out for yourself and go to God and say, God, I need your power. God, give me more power. More power, more power. <laughs> that ourselves get so clouded with fear and doubt sometimes that we don't recognize the man walking on the water. That's okay. We're, hey, we're fine. Thank you, Jesus. That's what happens when you get saved. You go from the darkness to light. Pentecostalism comes from Methodism, which is what I grew up as pretty much the most staid, middle-of-the-road Sunday Christian Protestantism on the market, where the standard Protestant church service hinges on providing congregants enough coffee to keep them awake the full hour. Pentecostal church, the high-octane, super-personal shout-a-thon, tailored to not only keep the audience's attention for hours on end, but to batter them so hard with God's word they end up seizing on the ground in fits of praise. It's like mainlining Jesus. While some Pentecostal preachers were able to turn their revival ministries into lucrative televangelical empires, the vast majority are still out working the tent circuit. There was a man that was brought to the gate of the temple every day. He couldn't walk. And two preachers full of the Holy Ghost come walking up to the temple gate. And they looked at him. And Simon Peter said, silver and gold have I none. He had to be a Pentecost preacher. He was broke. God wants his church to be filled with the Spirit. He wants us walking in the Spirit. He wants us talking in the Spirit. He wants us to have wisdom and knowledge in the Holy Ghost because He wants to do some signs and wonders. All you got to do is let Him have you. And, hey, let Him have your tongue and watch out. You're going to thank you Japanese. Amen. So far, we haven't seen any of the nine spiritual <laughs> gifts of Pentecostalism manifest themselves. Those are like the... Speaking in tongues, falling on the floor, rolling around, um, healing. That's Nobody's been healed sign. yet. It's kind of just like open mic Christianity. How many of you have ever seen a miracle? 
Well, look, y'all looking at another one. I've been shot. I've been cut. I've drowned twice. You see that Brian es Cadillac Escalade there? God gave it to me. All right. Listen. Kevin. How long has it been since you've been in church, brother? Been quite a while. I believe God sent you here to help me put this tent up. We had bags in this tent. Thomas, you know we couldn't hardly get them out. Couldn't do it. Sonny, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Would you do that? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Yes. I pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Strengthen him. Strengthen this Christian fellow in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. When you get discouraged, all you got to do is say, Jesus. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like the bad way of doing it, but it's better this way. Jesus. Jesus. That's all you got to say. Incidentally, Pentecostalism is named after the day Jesus' disciples first felt the Holy Spirit and ended up tongue-speaking so hard the rest of the temple thought they were drunk, which I can see. Now we're seeing something very Pentecostal right now. Glory to God. Nobody pushed her. Hallelujah! Glory! God, let your power go through this man. Feel this big man with your Holy Ghost power. Praise it, Victor. Dance. Somebody else want to dance for Jesus? For the Holy Ghost. What do you think about this? Um, I, I'm glad somebody put a coat on her to keep her warm, but it's, 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 it's also, it's very exciting to see. Now, let me ask you something. Yeah. Are you in training? For what? For a preacher? Like, I'm not taking classes. Would you like to speak tomorrow? If, yeah, if, if it's the kind of thing you think I could do. I believe you could. Okay. Everybody, before you leave tonight, I'm gonna tell them, you can't back out. Okay. Everybody, listen to me. Brother Thomas asked if he could preach tomorrow. Yeah, let's hear Thomas. Can y'all say praise the Lord with Thomas? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Can you say it again? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Have you lost any of your relatives? My dad died around, uh, or it would have been February 2013, so. Oh, well. Oh, you just yeah. lost your dad? Yeah. Yeah. How old was your father? He was 62. 62. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Thomas, come, come and stand with us. Dolores, this is my friend Thomas from New York. Give Thomas this dad a big old hug up there his name's thomas too thomas yeah. you're thomas jr uh different middle names different but... middle names yeah, okay dolores my woman my wife my precious sweet lady they're my soulmate i never come here that i don't give her kisses no we see you, baby. We see you. Jenny Jo lent me her, I think this is the very first Bible she had. Um, it's a real nice little pink one. She was worried I wouldn't like it on account of uh, the feminine qualities, but it's more of a salmon. So my method for my sermon, I kind of just adopted from um, something Harvey had been preaching about, which was um, just flipping to the Bible at random. And I opened it like three different places that mentioned like Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. So I took that 
Um, I don't know if that's just a coincidence or a sign from God or if there really is a distinction if you're a Pentecostal. Put your hands together for my brother Thomas from New York. Thank you all. Thank you. It's, it's very pleasant today um, out here in the country. And this lovely banner behind us um, about John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. But far and away, the most wildernessy of wildernesses. I was, uh, I was very, very fortunate to uh, travel with a French scientist to, to the Malaysian rainforest. All the plants have big, nasty spikes on them. All the monkeys aren't fun either. They throw things at you, nuts if you're lucky. And so we started trekking. The guide smiled at us and said, don't worry about it, this is a fun route. And some six hours after we left the plant, we started looking around and wondering, like, which, which, which route were we taking? What is this shortcut to, you know? We were getting nasty to each other. So we were really kind of losing hope. And uh, I swear before God, there was a beam of light and a little flutter of butterflies dancing in the sunlight right there. Cameraman who'd been uh, bit by a leech, he took the time to uh, wash out his shirt, held it up before us, and he said, uh, can't hardly see the blood no more. In, in, in the book of Exodus, the, uh, the children of Israel spent 40 years walking in the, in the wilderness. Amen. Amen. On day three, the children of Israel began murmuring against the Lord. They murmured and they said, why? Why did we leave Egypt for this, just to die in the wilderness? We're all passing through the wilderness. We're all getting away from Egypt. I spoke to Brother Skip about um, his drug problem for uh, methamphetamine. And I'm uh, uh, ashamed to say I've had an experience with methamphetamine. And it's a, it's a particularly vicious, nasty, nasty sort of drug. And you may not feel terrible the next morning. You may make it a day or two. And you think you're, you're through the wilderness already, but it gets these little hooks in you and it draws you back. It doesn't make you think, well, I'm, I'm glad I got that out of me and now I can fix myself. It makes you think, I need more of that now. You know, wherefore did you take me out of Egypt for this? I feel awful. And there's a lot of children out there who are stuck in the wilderness and they're looking back and they're saying, you know, things were a lot better. Things were a lot better when I was high. Things were a lot better when I was going to bars, when I was going out. And Moses wasn't the only one who didn't make it into Canaan on his own. Just let this be a warning. Make it through the wilderness so we can all stand in heaven together and say, I made it through the wilderness. Thank you very much, Brother Harvey. Thank you, everybody. You've been a blessing to me. When you're preaching under your own tent, don't mm -hmm. forget me. No. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll be there. I love you, man. I love you too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that went all right. It's, a, it's definitely fun up there. It was kind of a cross between stand up comedy and sort of like group therapy mixed with a little bit of like Bible trivia. At the same time, I wonder if there's any kind of a sense of sort of religious entropy at play here. Or as boring as things like the Catholic Church and Orthodox rituals are, there's they're still a reason for those rituals, and they're kind of geared towards holding a, a mass audience together. In these churches, everybody's kind of chasing their own belief system, and you, you see its effects right away, where there's a number of very slightly older people and very few young people, give or take a Sonny or a Ginny Joe. It makes you wonder how a church like this can maintain steam in this modern era with our MTV and our T-Rex laser tag golf. And also, not to crib from the book of Groucho, but I'm a little bit worried for any faith that would have me as a preacher. 